Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection from First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo, Texas on May 2nd, which is a Thursday, right? Is that right? Yes, it is. I'm Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're going to do what we haven't done for a while, actually. We were just talking about how we haven't done one of these in maybe a month, it seems like. It's been quite some time. It's been busy. It's, there's been a lot of busy. But anyway, but it's always good to be uh, in God's Word. And so we're going to do our daily lectionary texts for today talk about it a little bit and see what uh, the Lord might reveal to us. So um, let me open this in a word of prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we're grateful uh, for the amazing ways that you love us. And even in the midst of a crazy world and all of the strange things that are going on, um, not just around the world, but in our own communities, um, we ask that your spirit of peace and compassion would be upon us and that your will would be done in our lives and in this world that you have created. So Lord, as we gather around your word today, I ask that you would again reveal to us more about who you are, more of who you are, that our lives might be transformed and we might be transformed increasingly into the image of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. <clears throat> Starting today with Psalm 47. Clap your hands, O all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He, he subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises, for God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God is King over the nations, God sits on his holy throne, the princes and the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God, he is highly exalted. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. And our um, reading from the Hebrew scriptures today is from Leviticus uh, chapter 19, starting in verse 26. You shall not eat anything with its blood, you shall not practice augury or witchcraft. You shall not round off the hair on your temples or mar the edges of your beard. You shall not make any gashes in your flesh for the dead or tattoo any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute, that the land not become prostituted and full of depravity. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or wizards. Do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. You shall rise before the aged and defer to the old, and you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as the citizen among you. You shall love the alien as yourself. For you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You shall not cheat in measuring length, weight, or quantity. You shall have an honest, you shall have honest balances, honest weights, an honest ephah, and an honest hen. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You shall keep all my statutes and all my ordinances and observe them. I am the Lord. I'm turning over to the New Testament, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, 
grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. We must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as is right, because your faith is growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for one another is increasing. Therefore, we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your steadfastness and faith during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. This is evidence of the righteous judgment of God and is intended to make you worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you are also suffering. For it is indeed just of, God, just of God to repay with afflictions those who afflict you and to give relief to the afflicted as well as to us. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, inflicting vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus, these will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might, when he comes to be glorified by his saints and to be marveled at on that day among all who have believed, because our testimony to you was believed. To this end, we will always pray for you, asking that our God will make you worthy of his call and will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Our gospel text today is from Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse, what does it say? Verse 25, 25 through 34. <clears throat> Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? you of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. And back to our Psalms, Psalm 68. Let God rise up. Let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord. Be exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. But the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain and abundance, O oh God, you showered abroad. You restored your heritage when it languished. Your flock found a dwelling in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. The Lord gives the command. Great is the company of those who bore the tidings. The kings of the armies, they flee, they flee. The, woman, the women at home divide the spoil, though they stay among the sheepfolds. The wings of a dove covered with silver, its pinions with green gold. When the Almighty scattered kings there, snow fell on Zalman. O mighty mountain, mountain of Bashan. O many peaked mountain, mountain of Bashan. Why do you look with envy? Sorry, hold on. 
Why do you look with envy, O many peaked mountain, at the mount that God desired for his abode, where the Lord will reside forever? With mighty charity, twice ten thousand, thousands upon thousands, the Lord came from Sinai into the holy place. He ascended the high mount, leading captives in your train and receiving gifts from people, even from those who rebel against the Lord God's abiding there. Blessed be the Lord, who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. Our God is a God of salvation, and to God, the Lord, belongs escape from death. But God will sh shatter the heads of his enemies, the hairy crown of those who walk in their guilty ways. The Lord said, I will bring them back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea, so that you may bathe your feet in blood, so that the tongues of your dogs may have their share from the foe. Your solemn processions are seen, O God, the processions of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers in front, the musicians last, between them girls playing tambourines. Bless God and the great congregation, the Lord, O you who are of Israel's fountain. There is Benjamin, the least of them, in the lead, the princes of Judah in a body, the princes of Zebulun, and the princes of Naphtali. Summon your might, O God. Show your strength, O God, as you have done for us before. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings bear gifts to you. Rebuke the wild animals that live among the reeds, the herd of bulls with the calves of the peoples. Trample underfoot those who lust after tribute. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Let bronze be brought from Egypt. Let Ethiopia hasten to stretch out its hands to God. Sing to God, O kingdom of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. O riders in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen. He sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe to the power of God, whose majesty is over Israel, and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. And our final psalm today is Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness. Um, yeah, a little bit of catch my throat there. Uh, That's all right. The contact's fun, and I was like, I can't do <laughs> that. I don't know that. Oh, excuse me. I wish we had ways to edit all this out, but I'm not that good on the uh, not that good on the it's right. videographer. It's, it's real life. You get what you see. Yeah, pretty much. Yes. Um, gosh, lots of good stuff in there today. Um, I know we haven't done this in a while. Uh, I is it okay if we start in the Thessalonians passage? Absolutely. I should have brought some water. Um, the Thessalonians passage. You know, one of the things that we talk about uh, when looking at any of Paul's letters is they have, uh, they follow the conventional letter writing formula of the day where he would introduce himself, um, introduce his audience, say a prayer, and then get to the whole point of his letter. And interestingly enough, that is not found in chapter one. Um, it is found actually at the beginning of chapter two where it starts with, as to the <coughs> excuse me, as to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as though from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is already here. And so that that phrase, like we beg you, or we want you to remember, or here's what we're going to talk about, basically. And so there was this concern within that church that Jesus had already returned and the people of God had been left and that they were suffering persecutions because of uh, some sin Judgment or failing on, on, yes, out. right, some sin or failing on their account. 
out. Uh, uh, and, and Jesus then was dropping these punishments on them. And so this is meant to be a letter of strong encouragement to the Thessalonians that actually indeed, and this is the strange part about that encouragement, um, these sufferings are actually the things that are demonstrating God's faithfulness to you <coughs> and that when God comes again, that those who are doing the persecuting will then experience eternal judgment. And so it's, a, it's, it's an encouragement, but it's a little bit of a strange encouragement because none of us today and none of us in the time of the Thessalonians enjoy suffering. We, we don't. We don't like it at all. And we do almost everything we can to avoid it. And so when it comes upon us, because our culture tells us that suffering is bad and all those kind of things, but when it comes upon us, we then assume that it's a judgment from God, that, um, that one, of the, one of the things that Christians, it's important for Christians to remember, is that um, God actually uses the suffering of his people to uh, draw them closer to himself mm -hmm. and that he redeems the suffering that we face. So um, it still doesn't make it easy. Um, it, it doesn't even hardly make it easier, but it gives that, it redeems the suffering uh, and it gives purpose to it. Well, and I think it, it is encouraging though because um, we know that there there is suffering in all of our own lives. There are difficulties, there are trials, there are, there are things that happen. And if we fall into this trap of thinking that, I'm, this is happening to me because I've done something wrong. Their entire, you know, the whole prosperity gospel. Mm -hmm. If you are walking and doing what God has called you to do, then you're going to, this blessing is in material things and is in uh, financial gain. And that whole idea that if you are doing what God is calling you to do, that all of a sudden all of your problems go away and life becomes easy. And, mm -hmm. and if if your life is not easy, then, well, what are you doing wrong? Right. And and this speaks to that in our day and age. That, you know, it, it's saying the same thing. Those trials and tribulations, we're being shaped. We're being, uh, is intended to make you worthy of the kingdom of God. Right. Um, it, it's, those are things that just because you are facing difficulties, just because there are trials, um, that doesn't mean that you're not walking into what God has called you right. to do. In fact, sometimes I think they get harder <laughs> when, but right. that's, that's another, that's, you know. <laughs> well, and, so, I, well yeah. and sometimes they do, I think, you know, and I think when we attempt to, well, when we are growing in our faith mm -hmm. and when we are actually being obedient then to what Jesus has called us to do and we look at the life of Jesus and we see the number of ways that he was abused, he was abandoned, he was maligned, you know, all of these things that happened to Jesus, and he is God. He is perfect. He had done nothing, nothing. wrong, right. nothing to deserve those things, okay. but how the world is at enmity with God, and therefore, um, when you speak truth or when you are living righteously, uh, then that is when the attacks come. Um, I heard it on the, heard on the radio not too long ago that one of the... Um, one of the problems with evil is when you shine grace upon it, it, it reacts negatively, <laughs> that it comes after you because it does not want to be exposed. And so, right. um, and so it is an encouragement. It's a challenge. It is right. certainly a challenge. Um, but again, as we are transformed into the image of Jesus, uh, we, we can expect to experience challenges similar to his. I'm not saying that they, they are identical because Jesus is the only one that can do what Jesus has done. Right. Um, but he does in other places talk about how we will do things that, you know, by the power of the Holy Spirit, um, um, that we would be able to do in and of ourselves. So, yeah, so that's, that's, I think that's a good place to start because how does that inform everything else that we've read? And so I don't know where you want to go from here. Um. Well, I want to say one more thing. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm looking over here. Let's see here. Um, sorry, I was trying to listen and not read. And so you're going to have to give me just a second <laughs> I here. Talk I know. Too much no, 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 no. Um, 
No, it's, it's talking about, you know, when, uh, let's see, when God does come back, when he is revealed, um, verse 9, uh, these will suffer the punishment of eternal destruction, separation from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. Um, but in that, that separation, mm-hmm. what I wanted to say too is I think sometimes in that same same vein of things, you know, if, if you are suffering trials or tribulations or if you're having difficulties in life, somehow you feel that God has stepped away from you in, in that encouragement that um, it, it is, we are not separated mm-hmm. from God. There will be a time that there will be people that are separated from God right. based on the things that they have done or, you know, belief, lack right. of belief, sure. things like that. Sure. But we, as we are living out life in, in hard times, um, there is not, we are not separated from God in that. Right. Um, and so that's, that's what I wanted to say. Great. Okay. Well, and even, sorry. You're good. Keep going. Well, you know, jumping back to verse 3 and 4, talking about their their boasting and the fact that even in the midst of the suffering and persecution that the Thessalonians are feeling, they continue to love and to serve. Right. And I think that's just a good indicator. You know, if you are loving and serving sacrificially, then you are where God wants you to be. Um, And he is working that for you. So that's what their boasting is, that that the suffering and the persecutions has not resulted in, you know, bitterness or despair. They mm-hmm. continue to love, and Paul is encouraging them to continue to do that. Should we jump over to uh, Matthew? Let's do that. And actually, with that, I think Matthew, this is where it kind of ties back to Leviticus a little okay. bit, because, okay. um, you know, Matthew is this, it's, if, there, if there's a passage in Scripture um, other than Mark chapter 4, which is one of my favorites, Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 25 through the end of the chapter, is, is really one of my favorites because who amongst us have never worried about any of these things? Like, right. you know, we do. Like, what am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What am I going to wear? What's my job going to be? Where am I going to live? Like, am I going to have any friends? Like, all, you know, whatever it might happen to be, mm-hmm. it's like we all ask these questions about, um, you know, what is how do I make it through life? Even what is my purpose in life? You know, um, those existential questions that, that we often boil down to very tangible needs. Um, right. and, uh, and, and, and Jesus is saying that, you know, it's not that the tangible needs are unimportant because they are, okay. because this is God knows you need these things and it's not wrong for people to eat. It's not wrong for people to drink. It's not wrong for people to wear clothes. You know, those are good things that God does provide for us. But really, what is the most important thing? What makes all of this worthwhile? It's, you know, striving for the kingdom of God, or, you know, as the old song says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, you know, and his righteousness. And and so when one thinks about the purpose of life, how easy it is for us to get sidetracked by important things, but not eternal things. Right. Right. And, and, and we're talking, you know, here, um, it's, it's talking about clothing, it's talking about food, basic needs, um, and talking about, you're saying we worry about things that are, are good things or make life easy, but they're not eternal things. I think sometimes for us, I don't necessarily worry about the clothes I'm going to wear or the food I'm going to eat. I do know that there are people in our world that do worry about that so I don't want to discount that right. but how many times are we worrying about mm. things that oh, what did the stock market do what did that do to my 401k I mean we're worrying about things that are when I say bigger than this I don't mean bigger than this because these are basic needs mm. but we're worrying about things that they're not even basic needs mm. they are um, luxuries mm. Mm. and how many times when we are worrying um, you know, we're worrying about that. Now, there are people that worry about basic needs. Don't I don't want to discount that at all. But I'm not sure how that even. Um, I don't know what I want to where I want to go with that. But that's just I don't. It's know. a little convicting, though. Right. We many of us have it so good that we don't even have to worry about the basics. We're worried about the luxuries, which then takes us even one step further away from dependence on God because, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's mm. what I meant to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's but, really good. But it's but I, re- but I think it's, really it's so true, though. Mm. I do think it is so true. Um, mm. 
So. Well, and this is, and you've made it even more abundantly clear, jumping back to the Leviticus passage. Um, this, if, if you've never read straight through Leviticus, actually I encourage you to read straight through Leviticus because people go, oh, it's all the laws, it's all of this. But you know what, it's really actually fascinating when you read it straight through where God is trying to explain uh, what it means to be a kingdom of priests. And since Jesus uh, uh, says that about us as well, like we are a royal priesthood, we are the people that God has called to be his uh, uh, co-rulers and reigners over creation and, mm -hmm. and, and all those kind of things. What does it mean then? And the Leviticus passage, uh, you will find that there's a distinction that's being made between the duties that a priest has and then the things that a priest is to avoid. So there's a little bit of a difference here. Um, and right now in this section, uh, we're in the middle of that section, chapter 19 of Leviticus, it's it, in the do not sections mm -hmm. as opposed to the do stuff. Um, and so the chapter, um, honestly, chapter 18 um, starts a little bit more of that section and basically says, hey, you're going to come into a place where the people of the land are doing all of these things already. Don't do like they do. Here's what you are supposed to do, but now here's the section on don't do what they're supposed to do. I mean, don't what, do what, what they, they are, are doing, doing. Um, in order to, get, again, be distinct from that. And, and part of the reason why, why, well, why does God have to say that? Well, because sometimes what other people are doing can seem attractive. Or, oh, well, it works for them. Maybe I should do the same. Right. You know? And so this is, or this is just how the culture is, or this is just what my neighbors are doing. And so it's not that they didn't have their own duties. Now, it's, now you've got things that you need to avoid as well. So that is in this little section. And so when he talks about you know, starting there with don't eat anything with its blood. You know, they were talking about, you know, how do you prepare food and sacrifices, things of that nature. It's different for us because we do, we prepare food differently. I get it. That doesn't mean much to us. But well, we weren't, we're not butchering what we're like. We got to grocery store. Right. And they've already drained the blood, right? Before they did all the stuff. All done. But it's all done. Um, but augury or witchcraft, as in you uh, attempting to have control over the spiritual realms by, uh, by miscellaneous actions, things like that. Um, but then this whole idea of like rounding off your hair, beard, tattoos, gashes in the flesh, it's like, that was practices back in the day of, of people um, worshiping the dead um, and how they would make marks on their body and things like that in order to worship those who had already uh, died. But then, you know, it gets into some pretty tough stuff, like don't profane your daughter by making her a prostitute. And it's just sad to think that that happens today. That still happens today. There are people who do that. Um, and it's the, de the depravity that goes on with that. Um, but in you know, verse 33 for us, uh, starting there, when an alien resides with you in the land, don't oppress the alien. I think it's really important because we do have a lot of people that are coming to this country and, this, and, and we are in this big political debate about, you know, close the border, ship them all home and all these kind of things. And, and I don't want to get into the politics of all of that, but the reason why we're supposed to, as Christians, I'm not even talking about us as a country, but as Christians, how do we welcome people into our church? How do we welcome them? You know, I don't have any capacity to control the border, but if but I there are people who want to control the doors of the church. Absolutely. Who do we let in? Who do we keep out? You know those kind of things. And and I think for us, um, again, the politics aside, there's nothing I can do about it. But what what do I have authority over? Where do we have the capacity to be welcoming mm -hmm. um, and, and inviting and and giving full access to the gospel? regardless of what people look like or sound like or whatever. I don't know how they get to San Angelo. I don't know how they walk into the doors of our church. But if we treat people poorly who come into our presence, strangers who come into our presence, then we are doing it wrong. Because our story becomes the story of the Hebrews, which is the story of oppression and then freedom and sojourning. And where are we in this world? Well, right now we find ourselves in San Angelo. Right. But God might call us somewhere else, but we are to remember that he found us when we were, you know, he brought us out of slavery, uh, the spiritual slavery of our sin. Other people might be in that still. How do we welcome them? People might be wandering around, not knowing where to go. 
How do we provide a home for them? Um, and so I think that's where the challenge comes for us. And then don't cheat people either. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't, yeah. Don't do Weigh that. things right, measure things right. Yeah. Well, and I think going back to the, the alien and, and welcoming people into our midst, um, I think when we try to close the doors, uh, when we try to somehow police the gospel, mm. who is this for? Who is allowed to hear it? Who is invited to hear it? Who is worthy of hearing it? If we have the capability of doing that, or if we are, maybe, maybe capability is not the right word, if we try to take that upon ourselves, then we cheapen what Christ did on the cross. Right. Because you're saying that that was only done mm. for a select few. Um, and who are we to be the gatekeepers of that, number one? I'm um, the recipient of the grace, and it's mine, mine alone. Right. And we know that's not true. <laughs> but if we truly, right. okay, so we know that's not true. Right. We give lip service to that. But if we truly mm. believe that, if we believe that, that Christ died for all. Right. We cannot be people who try to police the gospel. Mm -hmm. We can't do that. It mm -hmm. cheapens it. And, um, right. Mm. Yeah, I think that's one, one thing to be mindful of though, basically if they reside with us, if the, if the stranger comes into our place, you know, they are supposed to be uh, we know we're supposed to love them as we love ourselves and within our community we still have the responsibility for protection of the community mm -hmm. and so just as I wouldn't let Natalie go around and be totally disruptive and breaking stuff or you know right. making a mess of things it's like well um, here are the standards for our community you are welcome but these are the things that we must not do and then these are the things that we are required to do. And so right. it's, not, it's, it's not the open invitation to do anything and everything that you want to do it's, and destroy the community. It it's, doesn't excuse it bad does, behavior. It, it does not excuse bad behavior. Right. What it does is it encourages us to welcome them into community where we all struggle sometimes with our behavior. Right. But how do we love one another? within that appropriate context. And so that, again, read through all of Leviticus straight through and, and understand the difference between the duties that you're required to do, which most of which don't apply to us anymore because we are no longer operating as priests in the sacrificial system. Right. Jesus did all of those things. But what things are forbidden from us because that's what people outside of God's favor do. So right. what, what do we do? What do we not do? And understand the difference of those. Sounds hmm. good. Sound good? Okay. Sounds good. Now we got four psalms, but did any one of them jump out at you in particular? Um, you know, some of them are, are regular ones. Right. Um, let me just glance here. Um, seem to be um, very, before I say that, let me, <laughs> let me make sure. Um, well, you know, well, even not having done this for a while, isn't it just good to hear them? It really is, um, and what I was going to say, and I think it, I think it's fair to say it, but I just wanted to check before I did. They they were not necessarily. Um, there are a few things here in this Psalm sixty eight, which was so long, but um, but they were songs of they were songs of praise. They were songs mm -hmm. of they, they weren't the songs of lament, and I, there's obviously right. a place for those, and we've talked about that before, and 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 the lament and, and things like that, but. Um, and sadness, but they were they were songs of joy and they were songs of um, of praise. And I think in looking at what the scriptures were today and this, um, yeah, being called into invitation with Christ and and setting ourselves apart by love and service, not by putting up you know walls mm -hmm. or, or or whatnot, but in in the way that we love people, setting ourselves apart there. Um, even in this, this God of provision, he, he knows us, he loves us, he knows what we need and he will provide. And then even in this Thessalonians, even in your suffering, even in your difficulties, even in your trials, um, you are, God is there and he is working in us and, mm -hmm. and for his glory and therefore in, 
for our glory. And so this whole, all of the Psalms bookended with these songs of great praise mm -hmm. and honor. And so um, yeah. it was... Uh, one thing you might notice when we're reading these, that throughout the text, there are these insertions of, in the Hebrew, would be salah, and, and it's, you know, uh, there are debates among scholars what, what it usually means or what it might ordinarily mean. Um, we have at First Presbyterian uh, interpreted, well, we interpret more along the lines of take a pause for some reflection, mm -hmm. and uh, almost like... Um, well, you know, like a, 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 diff, a change in the verse or something like that. But what was interesting to me about Psalm 68, and I get it, my Hebrew is terrible and I wouldn't be able to figure out, um, you know, verse breaks in Hebrew because I just, I, my, you know, language skills are poor. But how they appeared in the midst of, in our translations, in like the middle of a sentence. Right. And so, um, and so when we come across this as we read it out loud, we do take a pause. And so that's where Natalie was, except for that one time, what your, 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 uh, <laughs> context, your context fun. fun right? Yes. Um, but, but still, it, I think it's helpful to, um, to even in a way anticipate as we're reading these Psalms, there come upon us moments when taking it just just stopping for a second and reflecting upon that you know oh god when you went out before your people when you marched through the wilderness just kind of go what does that remind us of it reminds us of the whole exodus story right it reminds us wait wait but the people were marching in the wilderness wait but god was with them with god and you just kind of go whoa okay that's pretty cool um the next one, you'll blessed be the Lord who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. It's like, yeah. And then to follow that, our God is a God of salvation. Yes. And so it's like, stop and listen to what he says. And then that is so important. We're going to say that again. We're going to say that again, uh, which is pretty then, awesome. Yeah. And then there was one more. Mm -hmm. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. Why would we not? He's there with us. He is our salvation. Why would we not praise him? Uh, we had a little thunderstorm that came through San Angelo last night, and I do when I whenever I hear about thunder, when I, whenever I'm listening to it and hearing it and seeing the lightning and all that stuff, you know, verse thirty-three, right out of that pause, a rider in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen, he sends out his voice his mighty voice. And I think that was in one of the other things. It might have been Psalm 147. You know, he rides on the clouds. Yes. Um, yes. He does. And I'm just like, hmm, I get it. Scientifically, it's a cold front moving over the top of a warm front, whatever it might happen to be. And they're spinning up, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And you just kind of go, yeah, but it's still the Lord riding in the heavens. And that's, it's, it's, a reminder that our lives, as important as they are, need to be submitted to his authority. Hmm. Yeah, we probably went a little long today. It's <laughs> well, we had a month's worth of stuff, so. <laughs> it's good. Just put it all um, in there. Put it all in there, all right. right. How about I close us in prayer? That'd be great. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time with you today. Thank you for your words to us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for inviting us into um, communion with you and with one another. And I pray that um, we do submit our lives to you and in that we feel your hand upon us and that in times of trial that we do um, turn to you recognizing that you are present and in, in times of, of ease and celebration that we also recognize you and recognize your hand in that and that we offer your pray, offer our praises to you for um, all of the things that you have done in our lives and for the way that you work in our lives and in Jesus holy name we pray amen amen all right everybody well uh, if you have any questions comments concerns call the church you might not get me. You might get Natalie. She's willing to talk. I'm willing to talk. Anyway, call if you got any problems. Uh, love to hear from you. Hope you're doing well. God bless. Bye-bye.